welcome to a smartphone that, regardless of whether you end up buying one, is going to leave an impression on you. For a device that starts at $479, I'm completely floored. But to start with, in the box, underneath the device itself, you've got three compartments, with one containing an 18 watt fast charger and another containing a USB Type-C cable. Weighing in at 215 grams, the weight is pretty much the first thing you're going to notice about this handset. The device in question is the Red Magic 3, and one of the most striking things is this rear design. You've got a fully customizable LED strip and an angular metal body. Pretty significant departure from your typical flat glass device, but they've done it for a reason. It's made of metal to help that heat dissipate, and the phone's grooves and its angular shape do help you to grip it if you're going to be gaming for a while. In those two senses, it's a big win, although it now does protrude a lot more in your pocket, and it's a criminal table wobbler because of it. But okay, this is cool. The Red Magic 3 pairs liquid cooling with a physical fan, so you actually have air travelling in through the back here, being blown onto the phone by the fan, and then leaving through the exhaust on the side. According to the company, this can keep the phone's CPU 16 degrees cooler. That's like the difference between the temperature outside on a sunny day and the temperature of your fridge. Oh yeah, and speaking of that CPU, the phone is jacked in terms of specifications. It's running the Snapdragon 855, a 5000mAh battery, and 8 gigs of RAM on the base model. It's also got a really intriguing camera, which I'll come to, but what you'll probably notice before any of that is that this is easily the best display the company has ever used. Remember, this phone is $479. It kind of follows in the footsteps of the OnePlus 7 Pro. It's a 90Hz panel, so it's one of the only phones in the world that has this ultra-smooth UI. It's a 1080p HDR AMOLED display, and at 6.65 inches, it is massive, which makes the phone even more massive because it's paired with some fairly sizeable bezels. It's worth pointing out though that the bezels are a huge improvement over the last Red Magic phone, and also that a lot of gamers actually seem to like some bezel because it prevents you accidentally touching your screen. The panel itself is good. It does crush the blacks a little bit compared to the Galaxy S10s. There's room for improvement, but it's far more competitive than past iterations. I was kind of impressed by the software. The company haven't really added loads to the stock Android 9 it's running on, but each feature does feel carefully constructed. You've got these air triggers that can be mapped to replace almost any on-screen control, and they're pretty easy to feel for and surprisingly responsive for capacitive buttons. There's a 4D shock feature, which makes the phone automatically vibrate every time you get attacked in games. Although, this does only work in a few, and to be honest, the haptic engine in this phone isn't great. You'll primarily notice this when you're typing. I still don't really like the stock icons and the stock wallpapers that come with the phone, but changing all that is a 5 minute job, and more importantly, at its core, this is a bloatware free Android experience. The other thing though, which I really do like, is the gaming space. You actually get a physical toggle that takes you there, and it's a space where you can just focus on your games. You have fine control over the fan speed, which is still a massive novelty to me. You can control whether or not you want notifications to reach you while you're playing, and you can screen record the games to share later. Oh yeah, and audio is covered too as well as the software which can give you virtual 7.1 surround sound, the hardware itself is really good. You've got a proper dual front firing speaker system, which is kind of a rarity with all these bezel-less smartphones, and a headphone jack. Let's talk about the camera for a second. For a phone that already does so much at such a good price, you kind of come in expecting nothing. And yeah, it's a single camera, so you miss out on ultra-wide and optical zoom shots, but the core camera experience is really rather good. You've got a 48 megapixel camera powered by the same IMX586 as the OnePlus 7 Pro. And this phone can record 8K video as well as slow motion at just under 2000 frames per second, twice as slow as the market leading 960. Now, there are a few caveats to this. As well as both features being in beta, the 8K video is only at 15 frames per second, whereas I'd say the lower limit to what counts as usable is about 24. That said, if you lean the phone against an object and slightly speed up the footage, it's pretty usable, and of course, mega sharp. Although a phone sensor is not really big enough right now to take proper high quality 8K video, this still gives you a lot of room to crop into. The photo quality is pretty decent too. It handles dynamic range and even low light reasonably well, and whilst the camera UI isn't as polished as with some of its competitors, I was almost always happy with the end result. 
Oh yeah, and worth mentioning is that there's a gaming port, presumably for third party accessories, and a fingerprint scanner on the back here. Really easy to feel for, but it just doesn't quite feel like the right shape for a finger. It is fast though. The Magic 3 has no IP rating or support for wireless charging, but those two seem like pretty fair emissions considering what you do get here. I gotta say, this mid-tier smartphone market is really heating up, and I couldn't be more excited about it. If you enjoyed this video, a sub would be massively appreciated. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.